see these guys quite busy. See that one in front now bending around to its back. Now, most birds have actually got a what's called a preening gland in between. Imagine in between their shoulder blades essentially, in between the wings on the back. There's a little gland that they can get a, a oil-like or an oily substance from and they can use that to coat the feathers with. That's why also quite often they'll sit in the warm sun to warm up the call it the old oil if you want. It's a bit of an exaggeration to explain it like that, but the the old coating that they had on the feathers warms up and that makes it easier for them to brush sort of looking like they're scratching at their back. They're actually getting to that preening gland and get some oil from it. pretty little guys, sort of a lime green color, yellow and black. And there's one in the front here maybe. Not that one. The one, that one the yeah, it's here just above the dead branches. These are called little bee eaters. There's two there now, looks like they did a bit of alloc or mutual grooming. Feathers all puffed up. Not long but just really pretty. Awesome to see them at the well, actually, around here, the only bee eater that stays here throughout the year. All your other bee eaters leave either for Europe or for Central Africa um, in our winters, so they only come for summertime. But these little guys stick around the whole year and they're also territorial. So, in this area, we do see them sometimes, but this is the first opportunity where they actually sat down for a while. <laughs> awesome, shut down, sort of in the lower parts and, and sort of. Even hot well, in the lower parts under trees and mostly in the trees as well so they're much better at sort of weaving through the trees and getting in and out of little holes in the bark and breaking little twigs off and things like that whereas the yellow bolt hornbills more often are on the ground actually so their beaks not quite as heavy so they're a little bit more streamlined and sleek I do highlight of course the fact that I said it generally the way they feed. Of course this kind of hops down to the ground and goes and feeds on that termite mound. That's something that a lot of birds try and utilize. One of those interesting little statistics is that it took all the humans in the world, about six billion of us, we added all those termites together they would outweigh the combined weight of humans. Now, if you really want to keep yourself busy mathematically you can go Find out the weight of a termite, figure out how much it is to weigh the same weight as the average human and multiply that by 6 billion. You'll have a rough idea of for termites every night and a lot of birds. In summertime especially you see it very often. The termites are busy building new parts onto these mounds. They'll actually break it open and find the termites inside. And then the secondary part of it as well is that termite mounds themselves create and attract a lot of other life around them. In other words, you'll have mongoose living in there and those mongoose will leave droppings everywhere and those droppings will attract flies and ants and maybe some fleas and other paras terminalia type thickets that you get very often are fruiting trees so they drop berries and seeds down that might have nuts inside them so you just have a whole potential or a whole buffet potential around these termite mounds for food and that obviously attracts a lot of birds, mammals, reptiles all across the board. Let me get a bit of a view. These are your red bold hornbills. Ah, oh, beautiful. See the quick wings, it might come back to the same spot. Very often they use the same perch to hunt from. So let's just give it a second, maybe it comes back. There we go. It's got a perfect little perch there, easy to land on, easy to take off from very fast. You can just look around for insects, flirt down, grab it, fly back up. Very, very quick flip. So they're incredibly maneuverable as well. Most of the insects they catch, they catch actually on the wing while they're flying.
very lucky today. Like I said, these are normally quite tricky guys to see properly. It's a beautiful light, slightly from the side of it, so it gives you that nice glow. A beautiful sort of almost sunset orange colours on the chest. And again, like a lot of your diurnal hunting birds or insect catching birds, you can see that black stripe across the eye. Get that with a lot of your strikes as well. Helps to reduce the glare a little bit. And that tail, we're helping a little bit of his balance. He's sitting on a very thin little dominant bird. He's happy and confident to be sitting out in the, in the open, showing himself clearly. Knowing that this is his, relative to his niche, it's his area. So the word we use quite often is niche. This basically refers to a very specific area of specialization, if you want to call it that.